because I think it's incredibly significant, and particularly, I think, for women and girls worldwide. And so I am delighted to be joined in the studio now by uh, Maya Tuzi to explain all of this. Good morning, Maya. Right. Morning. Give us a, an understanding of the political situation in Iran. How have we got to this point in 2022 when these girls are ripping off their headscarves mm. and trying to... Uh, assert their, their, their claim on being liberated. Yeah, firstly, a special thank you for covering it because uh, there have been um, people like me have been trying for the past uh, few weeks uh, to use my YouTube channel, Twitter and everything to actually get the mainstream media to actually talk about it, but you guys are actually doing it. It's fascinating because uh, obviously the revolution happened back in 1979 and um, this was not a revolution. People in Iran would call it an occupation mm. uh, by the, by the uh, Islamic regime. And uh, every 10 years, at least coincidentally, there's been a movement and it's always been crushed. And some people would say, actually, to be fair, while those were very impo important civil rights issues, um, it was mostly led by the, the young, educated middle classes and a, lo a lot of men. And uh, they, they, the regime used to have a tactic. You just shoot out a couple of people, everybody else run away. Because the Iranian culture, they're not revolutionaries. Right. Uh, but this time, uh, the last movement we had was in 2009 when an election was rigged. Um, and again, that lasted for a while, but again, it died. This didn't really start uh, from what we know of. Uh, the 22-year-old the Masa Amini who got mm. arrested and killed by the morality police. That was just a spark. This actually started in 2019. Right. Uh, this is a combination of an, an extreme cost of living crisis uh, combined with the dignity and respect that's been lost. And uh, this is basically the rise of uh, the, the, the Persian Iranians, the Turkish Iranians, the Kurdish Iranians, all over the country, rather than just the capital. You have the young, you have the, 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 the old, you have men, women, now school children. In fact, because of the spark, because of the, the Mass Amini, um, it actually this time it was led by women. And over the last few days, uh, we've seen footage that school children, uh, school girls are uh, burning their headscarves and actually pu pushing out uh, the, the regime thugs who come to the school uh, to actually tell them to kind of calm down and follow the rules. Well, that's, not what, listening. that's what we're looking at here. So yeah. that school had uh, invited a member of the Iranian yeah. parallel military. Yeah, yeah. And ordinarily, so just tell us, how <laughs> normally would those girls have responded to somebody like that? Just basic um, silence. So, so, so not really actually agreeing, not really obeying. Um, the, both uh, the, the regime and the, the, the people have always turned a blind eye against each other. So the, mm. the regime know that people don't really like them. Uh, but as long as the people never revolted, everybody was fine. It was a sh handshake kind of agreement. Mm. But this time, the reason it's different is because... Um, it's not only it's everywhere in the country, all, all groups of people and everything from the different ages and different genders and different everything, uh, but actually the, the difference is they've lost that fear. They don't have that fear anymore. Why? I, I, mean, it's, it's, I mean, there are theories behind it, but um, it's, it's still too abnormal to, to, for a human or a group of humans to completely lose that fear. As I said before, they could shoot at a couple of people and everybody would run away. Yeah. Um, but this time they just walk towards the security, security, security forces, take off their headscarves. They know what could happen to them, like the, the, the other women that's happened, but they still don't care. They sh shoot at me. I don't care anymore. It's phenomenal. Is it partly because of the... I mean, what was the COVID situation in Iran? Did they have lockdowns like we have had as well? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they still essentially um, had, had the, all the measures or certain measures until quite recently in, term, in terms of face masks and everything else. Although the face mask uh, tactic uh, backfired on the Iranian regime because now protesters are using them to hide their faces. Guys, Some people were confused, like, why are they wearing masks? It's because they want to hide their faces. <laughs> <laughs> so that backfired massively. But that, the, the COVID situation was absolutely horrible because um, you think our government's kind of mishandled in terms yeah. of uh, uh, the, the, the lives that were lost during lockdown. But actually, in Iran, they, they didn't really do public health properly. They didn't really handle the people who were just uh, under lockdown, losing education, losing their jobs. So everybody lost. But they kind of created the pause. They use it as a wartime situation in Iran uh, to create a fake unity. Right. Um, but they thought that the uprising that started in 2019 is just gone now. Uh, they were not really expecting one 22-year-old woman. That happens, unfortunately, all the time, that sort of situation. Does it? Uh, yeah, the morality police and things yeah. like that. That's exactly how my mother actually came to this country. She was a political refugee because she, she was chased by the morality police on the streets. And then uh, she obviously came here. Um, but uh, so that is creating a fascinating situation. Now, uh, to kind of 
mm. point out the main issue is that, uh, of course, it's the cost of living crisis kind of created the lack of fear. But this revolution mm. is a revolution for being able to sing. It's a revolution to be able to dance. And in a nutshell, because we're running out of time, um, yeah. how optimistic are you that this will end well for the Iranian people and the Iranian women and girls? It will end it will be a happy ending, but of course it will be a bloody pe period first. But it, it, it would not be like uh, Egypt or Libya or uh, Syria. It, it's a very different culture, different country. We'll be fine. Okay. <laughs>